This is the official intro to the Board and Scale podcast. Today, you're blessed by only two guests. Uh, and I, when I say guests, I mean your lovely pair of hosts, which as always is me, Sebastian. And me, D. Weezy. On the hot mics. Bringing you the best board game slash snake reptile content all in one channel because no other other channel does it <laughs> but yeah i'm also free handing the mic so if my voice drifts in and out like this it's because uh i'm not used to holding the mic the free Turn hand off. is the way to go yeah it honestly i feel a little bit better because i can kind of move wherever i want to move gotta turn off the bluetooth to make sure i'm not gonna get any extra And we are back. So just as a little surprise during the break, maybe why I'm a little bit out of breath, we went and grabbed some of our friends from the studio. This is Sizzle, our hog nose. You can't really see him. The light's glaring on him real bad. But Sizzle's who I decided I'm going to hang out with. <laughs> and Dwayne is holding a ball of... Snake flavored jelly. Oh, yeah, let me hold her. This is one of our ball pythons, Acadia. I'm holding her a little bit weird, but she's okay. She's a big enough girl. She's strong, so I have no, uh, not worried about her health at all. But Dwayne's going to go ahead and hold on to her while we're doing this show. And if you are listening to the podcast right now, um, we are just holding some of our snakes here. Again, I have a Western hog nose in my hand, and Dwayne is holding a ball python. Ball python. Yep. Look at that. Ball, ballius pythonius. She is so pretty. Yeah. It's uh, Kenzie's favorite, or one of her favorites here in our little, our little collection. But I thought it'd be appropriate, since we finally now have a video portion of the podcast, or really a video version, to show off some of the little snakes that we have. I don't really, I kind of forget to do it sometimes and show off on the Instagram page, you know, that is halfway dedicated to these guys. But yeah, so if you're curious about what it's like to hold a snake, this is one version of it, and Dwayne's hand is the, another version <laughs> of it. There's a third version where you're getting bit quite a lot. But we don't tend to have that problem here that much. Usually it's just me getting bit. I haven't gotten bit. Yeah, Dwayne hasn't gotten bit. But I handle a lot of our feisty pets. I'm the one that handles them. Anyways, that's enough about the snakes. We brought you some interesting topics today. Uh, I know that you have a few. Mm -hmm. I have only a couple. So we can go ahead and start with something on your list. Okay. Well, one of my topics was... Just quite a simple one. Um, why don't we start? Uh, actually, we'll start it on a on a good note. On a good note, one of the good notes. Um, just things that make you happy in the hobby, like things that, as you're playing, like will make you uh, happy, fill you with joy. You know. You know. Okay, just in general. Yeah, I could tell you easy one. So I played Dominant Species Marine, um, which is the first time I've played Marine. I've played the original a lot of times, and I love the game. It's one of my favorite, like absolute favorite ones. Today, I was taught Marine, which for those of you who don't know, it is the follow-up to its predecessor, Dominant Species. Um, but it does have... A couple changes in the game that are well pretty major changes in the game um, for one instance in that it's now instead of an action programming game it is a uh, worker placement so your action will trigger the moment that you place a pawn but I think it was like my second turn just in general my second turn where I forgot what I did I think I did the domination which the new domination gets you uh, allows you to take a bonus special pawn, which is the white pawn. 
we might have to wrangle the snakes every now and then, <laughs> but it is okay. Um, both of these have already pooped, so I'm not worried about that. Anyways, um, the new domination action lets you, instead of it being the normal domination action where you do the card, score a tile, you essentially just count up your domination in a new way as well. I won't ha explain it here, but... Um, if you beat what is called the target dominance domination value, you get the new or the special token of that relevant type of element. And I think I did that the second turn because I also had a genetic trait starting off that let me go backwards up the action track. So I could do that second turn and not screw myself. But as soon as I got that pawn in my hand and I started looking at the special Pawn actions, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm already liking this. I know it's going to be... I'm, I was worried I was going to lose the feel of the original dominant species. And so I guess, honestly, the easiest way to explain it is a thing that makes me happy is feeling a feeling that I, that I already know I'm going to like a game. As early as it being the second turn, I was already like, I love this. This is just like my one of my favorite games. That was very long winded. But <laughs> do you have any? Oh, other, yeah, uh, I any definitely get that. Like, there's been games where I'm reading the rule book and like going through the player turn section. I'm like, oh, yeah, this game's going to be it. I can already tell I'm going to like this one. Um, but yeah, like there's, or like even teaching the game and someone that you're teaching or multiple people that you're teaching, you can see are like getting into it. They're like, what? And like, wow, that's, that's dope. So just like the, the little stuff like that, like, so you like seeing other people enjoy the hobby. Definitely. Definitely. Like, just people just people enjoying themselves, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't want to see somebody sitting there bored or not having fun. You can see her in the bottom, <laughs> not to interrupt you. You going to bite me? If she bites me on camera, you guys won't see it. But if I'm sad all of a sudden, that's why. <laughs> Um, He's like, who is that? Why is she massive? Another thing that I can think of is like, well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, I think, like, just. I guess that's my biggest thing is just people being engaged with the game. Like no one is kind of dozed off into space or like just talking amongst each other. Scrolling on their phone. Scrolling or something. on their phone. Yeah. yeah. Just like people genuinely engaged in the game and really into it. Just makes me happy. Yeah. Makes me really happy. That's nice. Does it make it better, even better for you when it's like a game that you've introduced to the group? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and bonus points if they think they're not going to like it at first. Oh, and you change their mind. Mm -hmm. Like, um, like I've had, we go, here we go again, uh, Clock Tower. <laughs> um, there's been multiple people where I've, They've played the game for the first time, and it's like, you know, I really did not like that game at first, but then they hit me with the, but the more I played it, um, you really get into it, you know? And you, are, you start to understand how the characters work, and this can go for any game. You really understand how the turns work, how you're supposed to manage resources whatever game you're talking about kickstarters that are out right now that were either 
really excited about or curious about or are already back? I'll go first. Okay. Because I you already know. We backed Kalimala. It is a revi- revision. I don't know. New version of the Kalimala game from 2017 with new art by the great Ian you know, O'Toole. Very popular in the hobby. You know, all the big games. If they have a big name artist, like one in four chance, it's him. Anyways, we actually had a chance to play Kalimala in, I think, 2018 at the first PAX Unplugged that we went to. Mm-hmm. And they were doing a demo of the game. I'm not sure if it had just come out or not. It might have. Played the demo. It was the person teaching plus us two, three players. We love the game. Walk up to the shelf to go buy it. Look at it. Three players minimum. Uh, at the time, we were living in Maryland, and it was just us two. Like we hadn't, we didn't know anyone mm-hmm. playing games like any of that. We we're like, oh, we're just never gonna play it. But the new Kickstarter is out. Not only have we found a gaming group, have we found Dwayne and some other players that we play with throughout the week. They also have a two-player variant now. Nice. So that we can play it. Regardless, if you guys end up hating it and no one wants to play it, we can play with each other. <laughs> um, so that's one that I'm really excited about. Just, it's not, it's not the campaign's still going. So I, we probably won't see it for another year and a half. You know how Kickstarters go. Yeah. But yeah, still excited about it regardless. I'll probably forget about it in about a month. And then the pledge manager will open. The usual, yeah. yeah. Remember when the pledge manager happens? Forget. Remember when I get that message <laughs> saying it's on its way. <laughs> but yeah, that's mine. Um, one of mine is uh, Critter Kitchens. Yep. Kitchen Critter. I can never remember which one it is. I'm pretty sure it's Critter Kitchen. It's those two words for sure. Critter Kitchen. In some order. In some order. Um. It was one of those where I saw it, and it really didn't take much convincing uh, for me to back it. It's the same people who made Flamecraft. Um, well, let me take that back. It's the same artist for sure. It's the same art. I would have to. I have to uh, look at re- the, the publisher. The I'd designer. have to recheck. Um, oh. Let me just look it up right now. Oh, yeah, we do. We but, have technology. Yeah. Anyway, it's it's definitely it's the same art as Flamecraft. So it's very cute, very colorful, which as most people know that know me, that is one of my things. Um I love very vibrant colors. I love the nice art styles. Um also like Kitchen, or not kitchen, like cooking and food games are just kind of like nice. Is like, that why you sent me the charcuterie board game? <laughs> that one was just funny because it's just like charcuterie. It's like, that's strange. I was, but I'm so endeared by it and I don't know why. Because <laughs> it's like charcuterie, like you, you've nev- never seen that before. Like charcuterie, that's that's out there. Yeah, because we're, we've gotten to the point now, like we're so... Like, all the cool stuff has been done. Yeah. So, like, people are, like, making normal things cool. And it's working because I want that game. I just want <laughs> to have it in my collection. But, I don't know. I didn't even look at it. I just saw Charcuterie. That's cute. But, yeah. Um, I agree about the food thing. Like, it's just so... Yeah, it's, like, it's just a solid theme. Like, any food slash cooking game I've ever played... I've had fun with, I've liked. Um, so this is just another one in that in that area. Um, it's a very good looking game. Uh, looks fun. You're going around uh, collecting like ingredients, recipes, stuff like that. Um, I'm fact checking him as he says this. Just reading through the campaign. <laughs> um, so it's like it's nothing crazy it's nothing major but like if you saw it it's very whoa that looks nice 
which is just one of my things, man. I love it. Love looking at stuff on the table. Yeah, cardboard alchemy. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah, it's it's uh same people as Flamecraft. I want to go to their profile so I can see what they've done created. Was Flamecraft the Kickstarter? Yeah, that was their last one. Mm-hmm. Flamecraft. By the same people that brought you Mission Catastrophe. And I don't know what their first thing was. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I will say it does look really cute. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And I like that because... Oh, of this dude, look at that. Open Kickstarter. <laughs> oh, there you go. Last thing you're Already on. on it. Last thing I was on. Um, I do like that by proxy, I can't. I don't feel so obligated. Like, I don't feel the FOMO mm-hmm. of not backing something, even though I want to play it, and I know I'd be excited to play it, because you're back in Critic Kitchen. So yeah. I'm like, cool. Like, I'm going to get to play it. Like how Kevin asked us in the group chat like were we going to back mythical creatures um i thought about it but now that he's backing it he's literally like well i'm backing it so yeah you can play it you can play mine when it gets here yeah which is which is nice that's that's it's good so like we're all not backing the same thing and one of us happens not to like it. Yeah. We oh, can try it out. We get it at the same time, and then everyone wants to play their copy. And Exactly. Yeah. It, um, is, it is nice. If we keep name dropping Kevin. Kevin's going to have to be in here. One, one of his like, episodes. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure we've named Kevin in every episode. In every single episode. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really funny if he's, like, not even listening. He but does listen. He does listen. Just- <laughs> I can tell you that. Um, but yeah, it would be, it would, we should get him on here one time and just see what we just make him defend himself. <laughs> Everything that we've ever talked about in the podcast. Um, Anyways. I've got, oh man, I've got a couple actually now that I'm looking. So while you're looking, <clears throat> well, I, I was also meaning like stuff that's running right now, just so like. I don't know, because like what I already have, I'm excited for it. I will mention one at least, Fromage, because it kind of just funded like a month ago or something, mm-hmm. but the game about making cheese. Another like, why? Who yeah. cares? Yeah. You want <laughs> you have to age your, your whatever it is, your milk or I don't know what, and turn it into cheese. And that's so, I want to do that. I want to just be like a cheese farmer, you know? <laughs> That's my escapism now is just aging milk into or whatever it is into cheese. Another current running project I'm excited about Undergrove. Okay. The mushroom game. Where are these like the mushroom games are just <laughs> coming out of nowhere. My theory. And that's just like mushrooms, actually. <laughs> but my theory is why I'm scared. I've always wanted to design a game, but I'm scared of Take, pitching an idea to a publisher and then be like, mm, no, we're taking that um, because uh, we don't like this one thing that you do. So we're going to change it and then say that this is what we designed. Mm-hmm. So I think what happened is someone that first mushroom game like three years ago that was at I saw it at PAX. I don't remember what it was, but they were it might have been Mycelia. They were demoing it. And they were like, oh, yeah, like, this is our, we're going to put this on Kickstarter in, like, a year, um, blah, 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 blah. I didn't back it for whatever reason. And then I saw Mycelium. And then I saw some other Miss Something, like, Fantasy Mushrooms game. And now, Undergrowth. So I totally... My theory is that there's an ag- a good idea somewhere, and then it gets copied. Yeah, that's fair. Because it, it happens too often for it to not be a thing. Yeah, you know, it's it's crazy. I'm excited though. I think I do think Undergrove so far has looked the most appealing to me. Mm-hmm. I'm also a fan of Elizabeth Hargrave. She's co-designer. I think this one with I don't know who, Mark Wooten. I don't know. I don't know what he what he's done, but Wingspan is one of my favorite games, so I'll always give Elizabeth Hargrave a shot. 
because I backed my Celia. So, do you have it yet? We can, hmm? No, do you have it right? oh, okay. Mm-mm. It's it hasn't been too long since it since it funded or since it ended, I should say. Okay. Um, but yeah, we can try each other's copies. <laughs> well, I didn't get my Celia. No, that's what I'm saying. Oh. I try Undergrove. You try. No, I'm not getting Undergrove. Oh. No, it's just running right now. And it's one of the games I'm like fumbling about. I'm kind of hoping that one of you guys will be interested <laughs> in that. <laughs> but the deluxe edition is like, it's expensive. And it's a deluxe edition. Like you're paying for a nicer mm-hmm. version of things. You're going to pay a luxury tax. Sure. Fine. $40. The retail game. Uh, forty dollars seems reasonable to me for what I've, you know, just looking through the campaign, for what's in there. Yeah, that seems reasonable. A lot of cars, a lot of little pieces. So, but yeah, that's another one I'm excited about. Um, one that just opened, uh, Kelp. Yeah, that's another one that I'm fomoing about. <laughs> Again, um, not as bad because. You're getting it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Two-player asymmetric game. You got a shark versus an octopus. Um, the shark, the shark's gameplay is bag building with dice. Um, and the octopus is a deck building. Um, and pretty much uh, the shark wants to cap and eat the octopus the octopus just wants to uh stay away until the shark's energy runs out and doesn't want to go anymore that's perfect (laughs) (laughs) that is just like in nature (laughs) um but yeah like again another game that just looks great like just got these translucent dice um the octopus has really good looking cards plus these little blocks that you stand up on the board around the board um so it's just again another just good looking game but it also looks fun i'm not really much of a two player person not anymore at least now that i've actually got groups to play with but this one looks fun enough yeah to where, into group play yeah yeah i am <laughs> but yeah, Kelp is another one that I saw. I've been seeing, but as soon as it opened up, I was like, "Yep." So I've actually um initially I only saw like Kelp, cool underwater two player game, asymmetric. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. I'd only ever seen like the cover image, you know, through ads and whatever. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, that looks interesting," but never really clicked on it. Dude, I clicked on it today or maybe yesterday in Kickstarter. And I saw those freaking blocks, and I was like, dude, they're going to be so nice to hold. And we were just talking about Pax Premier, too. Yeah, Pax <laughs> Premier. It's those chalk, chalk blocks, but they're like acrylic or whatever. Not acrylic, whatever it is, plastic, whatever, but they look really nice. Dude, mm-hmm. So I'm sure they're going to be fun to fun to play with. Um, I don't really have any other like currently running ones. Critter Kitchen, Kelp. Dice Throne just ended for the Dice Throne X-Men characters. Are they doing late pledges? Uh, I don't know. It, well, if they are, this is probably recent enough to where people could yeah. potentially get a late pledge in. Mm-hmm. Um, Old King's Crown. That just... Is it still going? Mm-hmm. Actually, oh, it's still going. 12 days left. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um... But yeah. As of today, November 10th. Yeah. Literally, literally, <laughs> all of those games I just named were like, besides Dice Throne, I backed just because of the way it looked <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Old King? Uh, yeah. It does look really cool. Yeah. Like, it looks insane. Like, looking at, like, pictures... It's just like, my goodness. I'm going to click on it here. 
you're listening to the audio only podcast, don't worry. The visual watchers are not getting any imagery. Here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me scrolling. Yeah, like the, the cards, the board. It's just like, my God. Yeah, the art's really good. Whoever did the art on this was just going nuts. Just playing uh, sped up versions of Bob Ross paint tutorials. They look like light. Death Note. Just Where's his name? <laughs> What's Death Note? Really? What's anime? Okay. <laughs> I don't see I don't see the the artist's name is like not um prominently featured, so it's kinda weird. But the art's great, yeah. The pieces look great. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Kidder Kitchen. <laughs> uh Critter Critter Kitchen. Kidder, Old King's Crown. Kidder Kitchen. <laughs> Oh man, critter kit, critter, Twins critter bit, Christian. Twain's a little bit tongue tied. Old King's Crown and Kelp <laughs> are the only three that are currently running at the moment. As Sebastian dies over there, I was just freaking. <laughs> if you said Old King's Crown, Old something? King's Crown, I just spit all over the place. Oh my! I'm just gonna <laughs> stop talking. <laughs> oh man, this is a little bit of a loopy episode. It's always these late night mats, these mats. Man, that Lacrimosa game where you just completely came out of the rear. Oh yeah, that game. That game is deceptively long too. You know, because you don't really do much. You, you do four actions over each of the five eras. Mm-hmm. How long did that take us to play? Hour and a half. Was it about an hour and a half? I think so. Including teach two hours. Yeah. Do yeah. you think it was an hour and a half including or two hours including? I don't think it was two hours. Hmm. It felt like a long time. But I think I was mostly worried. I'm always worried about teaching a game for the first time. Especially because I had never set it up before. Yeah. Like Kenzie's always set it up. I was like, am I doing this right? And and then even still, I messed up a part of the game. It didn't affect it that much. I still absolutely destroyed Dwayne. Like there was no <laughs> way that he could have done anything better <laughs> To win the game. <laughs> Untrue. But no, yeah, that game definitely, it burns my brain a little bit. And again, it's surprising that it like makes me think so much when it's really just doing an action, mm-hmm. a combination, you know, the cards in your hand. But yeah. Anyways, that's all for Kickstarter games. Yeah. You like how I end a topic by acknowledging that we had already veered way off course? <laughs> <laughs> And then just yanking it all the way back to it say... Does ha- it does happen quite often. And just say, and we're done with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have an interesting one. Um, this is more going to be... This is more of a one-sided segment slash event that we're doing. For those, I don't know if you have seen on our story. I don't think we've posted it, actually. But tomorrow, Black Potion is doing a community market day. So basically, they are allowing people in their community to come into the store and use the space to sell their used games that are no longer getting any play in their collection or they just want to get rid of for any reason. Tomorrow, I'm going to be selling some of our games from the collection because they um, are ready to live a happy life somewhere else. (laughs) That's not this house. So I'm going to pick a, a few maybe like 10 out of there and we'll just go down and I'll get your feelings on us getting rid of them. Okay. Um, are there any that you've already played over there in the pile that you can see? Yes. Um, name the first one, man. I just saw blood rage down there. That Mm. hurts my feelings. Yeah. So we'll start with that. (laughs) Um, blood rage. It's, Causing Dwayne blood badge. <laughs> um, I'm I'm biased though when it comes to Viking the, the big three, Blood Rage, Ankh, and Rising Sun. Like, Blood Rage was my first, and I really I really liked it, and then that got me into Rising Sun, and then Ankh. I really like all three of those games, um. But yeah, uh. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> so, sadly, uh, it's a game that just doesn't get played in the house. 
And uh, that's fair. Know, you know, I want to know how old people feel about. I don't think it's. I I don't think it'd be very fun at two players anyway. Yeah, yeah. And it's a it's a game that it you're fighting each other. You know. Yeah. Ultimately, you're eliminating each other. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Competing directly. Another favored mecha you know mechanism in this house, as we have spoken of before. So yeah, that's one of them that's gone. Um, you never played Chinatown? Mm-hmm. Uh, you have played Chinatown? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Chinatown, we have we bought, never even unwrapped, and decided we're getting rid of it without ever having played it. Because Can I you? kind of bought it on a whim and realized it was an auction slash bidding game or negotiation, negotiation. And that just doesn't fly in this house. So we don't negotiate. We Can you even it. play it at two? You, you can't. We bought that at the tail end of Texas or uh, of Maryland and like, oh, we're going to go be with our friend forever. So we'll always have three players. Gotcha. Gotcha. Turns out no one wanted to play it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess it's kind of. We can be done with that. But I do want to just uh, talk about that in general, like the fact that we have a place that sells games you know, retail, but they're still allowing their community to use the space. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That is dope. And while I'm doing that, Dwayne is going to be playing um, Murder People at Nighttime. You already know it. Black Potion. Black Potion. Blood Tower. Black Tower. (laughs) Black on the Blood Tower. That was my nickname in high school. (laughs) Blood on the Black Tower. (laughs) (laughs) Don't Google that. It's an adult themed. <laughs> <laughs> this is a family show, Dwayne. Mm. How dare you? Mm. <laughs> Holy crap, that was loud. That was loud. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, folks. Anyways, we're going to move on. The market day thing is um, uh, the previous topic. A surprisingly a good amount of games that I've played over there. I don't know what that says about me. That's pretty good. <laughs> I think you have a pretty, it seems like you have a pretty, like, open um, uh, preference. I don't know how to say it for games where, yeah. like, you'll try anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think you've said that too on the yeah. show. So that's cool. Have you played Coral? I have not. I have seen it, bro. It's okay. I wanted more out of ILO after playing Bunny Kingdom because I think that was the first game that we ever played by them. Pretty sure it's just pronounced yellow. I'm pretty sure it's ILO. In the comments, is it ILO or is it yellow? I think it's yellow. The people that make Kings of Tokyo, because I know that's how you all know them anyway. <laughs> they also happen to make Bunny Kingdom, which is one of my favorite games. Still need to play that, by the way. It's awesome. But that was also the first game I bought by them. So I had so much hope the next time I saw an ILO game. Uh-huh. Fell flat. And I can't even remember what it was. It was just another one that, like, we got, played it once, hated it. Sorry, we didn't hate it. The game was not for us. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I gave it another chance with Korra. It's okay. It's kind of why it's over there in the pile. Just doesn't, uh, didn't, it didn't spark that, like, oh, my God, I want to play this again. You know? Mm-hmm. Root, which is unfortunate, but I know Kenza's take on that. Yeah. Also, another one that's just not as good at two players anyway. Yeah. Especially with, like, there's just so many different. It's asymmetric. If you guys have played Mm -hmm. Root before, you know that. If you don't, it's, like, what, six characters or eight with expansions? Like, I don't even know. But they're all asymmetric characters with different abilities. And... We just did not like it at two players, so it never got played at higher counts because it was just so much like, I don't know, sour grapes there already. It can be a rough teach, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we got it, like, when it came out a while ago, so, like, we were still not super, you know, into our heavier games in mm-hmm. our collection. Um. 
But yeah, it'll find a home somewhere else. You want it? <laughs> <laughs> he already has root. <laughs> he loves root. Um, but yeah, that's it for the coal pile. Remember that mm-hmm. video? Um, what you got? Another one I got is, is, do you think it's possible to have a game that you really enjoy that you will probably never play again? Yes. I think that, you know, honestly, I think there are people in this hobby that are like enthusiasts, Mm -hmm. right? And they are really deeply into their, their like niche in the hobby. Like war gamers, right? You find yeah. that a lot with like skirmish, board, uh, like tabletop skirmisher board gamers, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then you have people I think that are like me that are kind of in the middle, and you spend half your time wanting to play the same game over and over, and half the time wanting to collect every game that comes out ever. <laughs> and it's hard to split those up. Yeah. Honestly, I'll be honest. I don't. I can't, I don't think I have any. I don't think I can think of one that fits that subject. But I do know, like, it is a thing. Like, there, I know of people who have games that they really liked, but just by, if it's by choice, they probably won't play it again. Well, it's like, you got like if you think about it, how many people are playing, you know, a game every single day? Yeah. How much of that is a big game? You know? Like how many times are you playing multiple games in a day? Mm-hmm. And if you think like I know that I love Twilight and Miriam, I only played it once. I play a lot of games, in my opinion, you know? Yeah. So I have the time to like, oh, I'll shove a Twilight in there. Every now and then, because I really like it. I wonder, those people, they're probably like, what are you talking about? They'll play a game like that. Maybe it's a whole day. They really loved it, but they're like, okay, it's $150 for everything. I am okay that I played it and enjoyed it. I'm never going to buy it, and I'm never going to seek to play it again because, you know, I like a uh, hundred other games that yeah. I want to spend 12 hours playing. Mm-hmm. So, Sure. And that's just using, like, time as an excuse, you know? Yeah. It could not be the right group. Yeah. Like weather. And I feel like that's, like, yeah. Economy's that's like, down. <laughs> that's, that will probably be the most, like, uh, said reason. It's probably something like setup or the, the player group itself. Yeah. Like, you don't want to teach this game. You just want to play with the people that know it. Yeah. This game is a lot to set up. This game is a lot to tear down. Gloomhaven. <laughs> I like the game. It's a lot to mm-hmm. set up every time. Yeah. Especially if you take a break and you're like, what is this piece? What is this? Where are we at again? Yeah. What are we talking about? <laughs> Whose turn is it? Chicken Little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. But yeah. Time, right? Biggest excuse. Mm-hmm. If only we were time travelers. Dude. If you could stop time and wake up, it has to be, okay, you have to pick four people in your life. Okay. You could stop time at any point that you want. Sorry. You could stop time twice a year for 24 hours. You have to pick four people Permanently, who are going to be the only people that you can ever unfreeze in that 24 hours to play games with you. Do you think you can pick four people? Yes. Who? Kevin. You. Oh. Kenzie. Oh. Enrique. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. I'm telling. <laughs> She don't listen to the podcast anyway. <laughs> I think that's my four. Okay. Because I feel like that is my most versatile four. Like. That you could play whatever you want. That on, I could play on whatever. Given day. Yeah. Sure. Sure. 
It also doesn't have to be four, right? Like you have a game that's four players only. Mm -hmm. You're picking three of us out of the four, you know? Yeah. Kelp, you only need one other person. Gotcha. Yeah. But the entire group of four cannot change. Or like yeah. the four people that you have options can never change. I think, yeah, that that's that would be my four. Okay. Um, Just because, again, like I could play so many games with that four. Okay. Well, Dwayne is not thinking outside the box. I'm picking me, Kenzie, the president. You Do you know the president? <laughs> <laughs> you just summon him. You just say his name and he appears. <laughs> You just say, it's election time. Whose turn is it? <laughs> the president pops up. I'm here to play board games <laughs> and kiss babies. <laughs> Let's just do that. Does he know how to play the game already? Dark board games. Um, no. So you have to account for that time <laughs> in your 24 hours. Did and I'm picking Drake. Drake. Yeah. Because he, he, he'll be like, what the hell's going on? Where's, where's, what's happening in the world? And then, you know, years later, we finally will be crossing paths and I'll just see him and I'll choose to do it right then. And then I'll walk at him while he thinks time is stopping and he has 24 hours to do whatever he wants. I'll be like, it was me the whole time. <laughs> Champagne Poppy. Champagne Poppy. What's my, that's his Instagram. My celebrity four that I would pick. Yeah. Your celebrity guess. Henry Cavill. Ooh. Yeah. Because you know he's a nerd. Matthew Mercer. Okay. From the critical role? Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. So far, Henry's the like celebrity celebrity. I feel like Tom Holland. Tom, yeah, they, like you beat me to it. Tom Holland. Yeah, it's because his Spider Man character. He's so nerdy. I guess so. Like I don't even know if he's a nerd, but like he just seems like it. Yeah, not not in a rude way. Like you just seem so nerdy, Tom. The cool, in the you're cool definitely way. watching this. In the so. cool way. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Tom, how are you? Um, what's it? Who's a Tom? A famous Tom that you think? Plays board games. Tom Holland. Okay. That's we already said that. I'll give you one and you just say yes or no. Tom Hardy. No. Rude. I don't think so. But he doesn't for sure. He does not. I don't know what he I don't know if he has hobbies. He seems like an angry person. I'm sure he's a fine guy. <laughs> I'm sure he's a normal dude. Tom Cruise. No way, dude. That guy is way too busy doing ads for Scientology. <laughs> or whatever he does. Um, Tom Hanks. Ooh, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. He's like, ticket to ride. That there, That's exactly what I was going to say. Tom yeah, Hanks yeah. gives me like, clue. Catan. Catan. Some classics. Vibes, yeah. Yeah. Ticket to ride is probably the most modern one he plays. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Not even like Europe or anything, just straight. Just ticket to ride. Ticket to ride. <laughs> yeah. His kids Carcassonne. his kids are gonna get him ticket to ride legacy. Maybe even Christmas. Carcassonne is a little too spicy for him. For him. Pattern recognition. You know? <laughs> I think Tom Hanks all of those, all times will probably is has the most board game experience. All the football scenes in Forrest Gump. You know, the brain's all scrambled. <laughs> what do you think? Okay, so you said your four picks? Henry Cavill, Tom Holland, Matthew Matt, Mercer. Matt Mercer. And The Rock. The Rock, <laughs> dude. You're gonna be like, you're gonna freeze him just so you can work out for twenty four hours. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna spot me. You're gonna be like I can't do the ice. <laughs> that was a good try. <laughs> that was a good <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I 
can't even do it, man. I used to be able to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, dude. Do you think his character plays board games, Maui? No. No, no, no. Any one of his characters. He has to. He's going to be in character, though, for the whole time there that you're frozen playing games. Maybe Crypto, the super dog. <laughs> Wait, The Rock? Yeah. He's the dog? Yeah. I don't think I've seen that movie. It just came out and nobody talked about it. So it's oh, like, okay. it's whatever. <laughs> I don't think. I, I think, think they were riding the Paw Patrol train. The Paw Patrol train for sure. Granted. The f- deserved. Crypto was a cartoon first before Paw Patrol anyway. But. Paw Patrol got famous. Just yeah, it's so good though. Paw Patrol is the show's okay. Like the show is whatever. The movie, the movie had me tearing up. I'm waiting for the board game, <laughs> dude. <laughs> There's gonna Disney. be. It's gotta be. It's gonna, gotta be. Or no, they're owned by Paramount. It's a video game. So Paw Patrol. Paw, oh, I think I saw the, a PS5 one because I looked yeah. for the girls, but. They got a game, they got a movie, they got a show, they got toys. They, board game's coming. Man. A Paw Patrol Uno set. I'll take it. Uno? I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Paw Patrol Uno set. Who's uh, Mr. Humdinger? <laughs> President Humdinger was his name? <laughs> Uh, uh, it's just <laughs> I need my boy Chase to be something cool. The villain from Paw Patrol is Mr. Humdinger or something like that. I don't know. And it's just really funny to think of him as a card, like he's a draw four card, <laughs> Mr. Humdinger. <laughs> and he's just throwing four cats with different colored capes on them. <laughs> I know way too much about this. I kinda franchise. hit that. That was kind of a crazy cat sound. <laughs> That's my cat. My cat goes. <laughs> Echo. She has a cracked meow. She goes. You go Echo. She goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Um, she basically can't speak. Fair. That's fair enough. Neither can so I. So she could never call for help. So it's okay. <laughs> oh man. All right. What were we talking about? Uh, oh yeah, liking board games but not playing them again. <laughs> yes, that was the original topic, and then we transformed to freezing time. I don't know who my celebrities would be. That's fair. I feel like everyone has. I might do Henry Cavill just because that's a celebrity and I feel like it's part of the rules that I have to pick a celebrity. And yeah, he is just one of those. He's a nerdy guy. Joe, he, Joe Manganiello. Is that a baseball player? No, he's an actor. Uh, Actors are too cool, man. Have you seen Spider-Man? They don't have time. Well, the Toby Spider-Man, he's Flash. What? Toby, Toby Maguire's Spider-Man? Dude, from 15 years ago? Yeah. No one watches those. That's crazy that you just said that. Those movies are the worst movies ever. The only good Spider-Mans are the Tom Holland ones. Dude, when... That's insane that this just came out of your mouth. Dude, when Rey Mysterio (laughs) has the invisible... You know, he's got the hypnosis helmet. (laughs) Rey Mysterio... (laughs) Mask man. <laughs> Mask man. Mask man. Most controversial game I've ever played in my life. I don't know why. It's a good game. <laughs> I'm I'm fairly certain it's a 50-50 at the moment. Of who like of who people who like it and don't. Like absolutely hate it and like really enjoy it. Yeah. It's just fun for what it, it's fun for what it is. Like you can't take it seriously. And it's interesting. It's neat. Yeah. Super unique. 
Yeah, I like it's it's nothing like I, anything I've played before. Yeah, I mean it's like getting rid of you want to get rid of your hand, but like I'm, yeah, card shitting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I definitely said it the correct way. So whatever you heard was not real, <laughs> but now it's good. Sure, you could sometimes just like slam it down and win it and make everyone else lose. But yeah, it's a good game. So Henry Cavill, my first pick. Tom Holland's just stuck in my head now, and be- again because of the I don't feel like that's fine. But that's not who it is. No. My last three. Celebrities. Honestly, Aubrey Plaza. Oh. Because I feel like she's goofy enough where yeah. she would try. Yeah. But still smart enough to like enjoy it. You know, mm-hmm. that sounded that sounds really messed up. <laughs> but she's still like, you know, smart enough. She's competent. I'm sure that she's, you know, a wonderful person and very, very intelligent. I feel like you have to be. To be in the movie industry, maybe I don't know, but I didn't even pick a woman. I you, feel like that was yeah, very sexist of me. Look at this guy. Girls don't play games. Sorry, sorry, S- ladies. M H. No, but I probably I probably pick Henry Cavill because he'll be like the chill dude in the group, you know, but like very knowledgeable. I feel like. Well, what, what what's this game that we're playing next? He's not British. Yeah, he is. In it. Yeah. Wow. Henry Cavill. <laughs> Henry Cavill. Listen, Henry. You Spider-Man. Or Superman. I, I hear by you a formal challenge. <laughs> a duel by flintlock pistols. <laughs> and if you win... I'm transitioning. And if you win, then you can stay here in Texas. But if you don't, I get all your war hammers. <laughs> whore hammers I get all the war hammers <laughs> Okay Two more picks Throw some Throw some Throw some celebrities at me Okay Um, You got your four uh, Jackie Chan uh, Jennifer Lawrence Oh, she! I think she would be good too. Roman Reigns, John Ew, Cena, Roman Reigns, Becky Lynch. I don't know why are wrestlers. Just I don't know wrestlers? why wrestlers are coming out right now. Um, who else do we got? Who else we got? Uh, Gal Gadot. Oh, you know who? Ryan Reynolds. No, Ryan's too cool for games. No, he's way too cool. Ryan for games Reynolds too. definitely he does plays not games. Play board games, dude. He plays card games at the least. Okay. Are we counting internet celebrities? Sure. Okay, Ludwig. Okay. Do you know who that is? Yeah. Okay, he just seems like a chill dude. Yeah. And then Jennifer Lawrence. Because I think she seems like a... <gasps> no. I'm switching Jay Jennifer Lawrence for Kate McKinnon. Because that girl is hilarious. Do you know who, it, who she is? The name sounds familiar. She I can't put was a in a movie with... Um, She's an SNL, or was, I'm not sure. Um, but, dude, in all of the skits that I saw with her, I was, like, not able to breathe watching them. Um, oh, she's weird, Barbie. Dude, she is hilarious. Um, there was also another movie that I saw, Red, The Spy Who Dumped Me. And she's, like, the best friend of the main, of mm-hmm. Mila Kunis, who's the main protagonist. And that entire movie, again, is just laughing, you know? And I'm, like, crying, trying to, you know, not pass out. (laughs) So I think it'd be a good group. Between Henry, Aubrey, Ludwig, and Kate, I think we have that all-around Honestly, seems like a solid group Of chill... Funny group, dude. I would honestly, I wouldn't make it out of the first twenty four hours. I think I would just go laughing into a okay. grave. Can I switch mine? 
What? I got to switch my okay, you get you got an Audible. Okay, okay. This is my Audible. Dot com. Just kidding, not sponsored. Henry Cavill and Matthew Mercer are, st- are still there. And then Rhett and Link. Who is that? From Le- Link of Legend? No, from uh, Good Mythical Morning. What's that? Oh, man. Okay, so. I'm kidding. For, oh, okay. <laughs> I've, I've only seen like a couple of their videos, but they seem like, like you know, yeah. cool, genuine dudes. Yeah. So, not bad. And they're friends, so exactly. you get the benefit of enjoying their interaction, yeah. you know? Because that's part of it, I think. You enjoy your, you know, back and forth with a friend, but also seeing other people back on each other, you know, and be comfortable is Granted, enjoyable. I don't think... Rhett and Link don't give me the vibe of playing heavier games. Mm. Like, I feel like they're the... Catapult feud because they want to know the physics. <laughs> <laughs> they're, I feel like they're more of the the uh, calico... Um, uh, 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 King of Tokyo kind of crowd. Wow. Yeah. Random output. Random output luck crowd. Are those random output? What? <laughs> Sounds like gibberish. <laughs> I'm gonna slow down. Random output. <laughs> Random output luck. That's not an official term, but like there is random input and random output. And I forgot what the difference is, but one of them people are okay with and one of them people really don't like. And I think it's random output. No. Yes. Like, for example, in risk, you roll the die and then they are determined by the random roll. Mm-hmm. There and then there's like the other side of ran- input from randomness, where like let's say there's a card market and a deck that you draw from. Uh, putting the next card in an available spot in the market where you can see and still make a choice is affected by randomness while still giving you a choice to execute on. Mm-hmm. One of those is called one thing, and the other is really not liked. Yeah, I'm assuming the dice rolls probably what's not liked. Yeah, yeah. People just like to have control, you know? They want to they have a choice in something. Yeah. People in their fetishes, I want to own <laughs> these dice. People reading too many smut books. <laughs> just kidding. But no. Yeah. That was a whole topic on its own. It was a whole celebrity time. game group. Celebrity game group. Burr, burr, burr. And that seems like a pretty good place to end the show. Solid. Yeah. I think. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, don't forget to leave a like on whatever platform you are listening to this or watching. And if it's YouTube, we have we ran out of film, so next week we'll be back. <laughs> um, hopefully for the full episode. But until then, we have been your host, Sebastian. D D Weezy. Yeah. I gotta figure out what name what alias I'm going by this week. And um go ahead and follow us on Instagram, Board and Scale, or Dwayne at Old Dwayne. Old underscore Dwayne. And yeah, you guys have a great uh, week. See ya. Bye. Good.